With the increase of skill power in update 1.6, a lot of people are now running builds that revolve around the turret and seeker mine. As part of our team, we are going to include such a build as well, but next to its skill power, it's also good at DPSing. This is important for the fire team since we only have one other DPS and this way we can boost the team's DPS by quite a lot. This build can be used for both PvE and PvP, though it's probably not the most balanced build outside of this fire team. So when running this in PvP, make sure you coordinate this with your team. With that out of the way, let's start taking a look at the gear. As always, we'll start with the chest piece. For the chest piece, we recommend the exotic chest piece, Barrett's Bulletproof Vest. Its talent, Barrett's Bulletproof, increases skill power by 10% when no skills are on cooldown, increases damage by 5% when one skill is on cooldown, and it increases your armor by 10% when two skills are on cooldown. Alternatively, you could go for a high-end chest piece with Vigorous to boost your toughness. Of course, this would require a healer, so in solo play it isn't recommended unless you are running a healing skill. The backpack we have equipped is a high-end with the Relentless talent. It returns 3% of the damage done by your skills as healing. We went for this talent over Specialized because we needed the extra healing more due to the squishiness of this build, even with our fire team. If you have enough stamina, you're better off getting specialized. The remaining four gear pieces, the mask, knee pads, gloss and holster, should consist of fire crest gear pieces. Of course, it has three bonuses. The two piece bonus adds three incendiary grenades to your inventory. The three piece bonus increases the flame turret's damage and range by respectively 30 and 50%. The four piece bonus increases your damage by 15% to targets that are on fire. Similar to our previous build guides, we'll show you all the details in the build, like the main stats, armor, talents, major and minor attribute roles. We'll quickly go over the most important parts. The main stats are firearms and electronics. When your build is mid-max, you want to have around 320,000 DPS, 225,000 toughness and 300,000 skill power. The armor rolls differently for every gear piece. Check the screen for more information on that. And now for the interesting part, the major and minor attributes. For the major attributes, the primary role should be health. It isn't a toughness based build, but you need some anyway to not be squishy. Health does more for your toughness than stamina, uh, where you can't roll health and for the second major attribute, you want to roll skill power. You want to balance it out between these first two. Thirdly, you want skill haste if the two we mentioned before aren't available. Every second your skills are on down is one second too many. Of course, on the gloves you can roll assault rifle damage as well, and that's definitely something you want. The minor attributes we mostly went for are the increased ammo capacity, burn resistance and shock resistance. This is not too different from the other builds. The gear mods mainly revolve around skill power and firearms. The major attributes on the mods are skill power, Performance mods that you can choose from revolve around the turret and seeker mine. Since this build is focused around the turret, we'll select the turret damage mods. These can increase your turret's damage by 16%. The weapons fit in just right in the build. The primary weapon we recommend is the Urban MDR. It has the highest base damage out of all the assault rifles as it has been increased by 65% with the 1.6 update but it also has the highest firearm scaling out of all the light machine guns, submachine guns and assault rifles. It has a higher than average headshot damage of 95% compared to the other assault rifles at 75%. Of course, being classed as an assault rifle, it also has enemy armor damage bonus that rolls up to 24%. And of course, since it's an exotic, it also has a unique weapon talent and that talent is called Distracted. It increases your weapon damage against targets with a status effect by 18% and this synergizes perfectly with the Dragon Breath turret and the Airburst Seeker Mine. These apply an incendiary effect on the target and this is, if you don't know, a status effect. These are the main reasons for this build having a lot of DPS on a skill build. But next to that distracted you can select two more weapon talents. When selecting these, you need to keep in mind what kind of skill build you want to create. 
in terms of high player damage or high skill damage, but also keep the stat requirements for the skills in mind. The second weapon talent is competent. It increases your weapon damage by 10% for 15 seconds after using a skill. This is useful because you're constantly using your skills and it doesn't have high stat requirements. It requires you to have 2875 firearms and 3833 skill power. The second talent we want is Talented, which increases your skill power by 15% for 20 seconds when killing a target. The timer refreshes when you kill a new target so it doesn't stack, keep that in mind. It requires you to have 2875 firearms and 4791 skill power. The weapon mods are similar to those we recommend to the other assault rifles from our Reclaimer and High Exotic DPS build. The selected optic is the VX1 scope. In the magazine slot you want the extended magazine, the underbarrel slot contains a small grip and the final modification, the muzzle, is equipped with the Omega Rifle Suppressor. If you want to know the reasons behind our choices, we recommend watching our previous guides. They are linked in the description. The secondary weapon isn't really of importance since you only will be using your Urban MDR, but if you are to be unable to use the Urban MDR, we want to select the Hungry Hawk. Of course it has a unique weapon talent, it's called Glutton. It increases your weapon damage by 20% when killing a target until you stop firing. This is very effective in PvE, but very rarely in PvP. Next to this talent, we recommend two others. Competent and Talented are once again the second and third talents. The weapon mods are similar to those of the Urban MDR. The sidearm you select is not really relevant, but we might as well recommend one, right? We recommend, just like in the DPS video, the 93R. The weapon talents you want are expert and responsive, neither should need explaining. It has one mod slot, the muzzle, and we recommend the small suppressor. It goes without saying that you only want to use this weapon when you run out of ammo on your primary or secondary weapon. Though the player has quite high damage, this build of course relies heavily on his skills. The primary skill you want to select is the turret with the Dragon Breath mod. It decreases the range by two thirds, but instead of shooting bullets it now shoots a column of fire. But most of you know this. It does however double the damage of the turret, so essentially you're training range for damage. But it also increases player damage due to the Urban MDR's distracted talent and the Firecrest 4 piece bonus. The secondary skill is the Seeker Mine with the Airburst mod. Deploy a mine that seeks out targets and upon impact, the mine launches into the air and releases a cluster of incendiary explosives. Next to the awesome explosion it has, it will also ignite your targets and proc the distracted talent and firecrest for piece bonus, similar to your turret. Since it is a DPS focused build, we recommend equipping the tactical link. No explanation needed. The talents are of importance too, but not as much as in the previous builds. The talents you want are tech support, wildfire, death by proxy and chain reaction. They can do some pretty awesome stuff though. Tech support extends any active skill duration by 10% when you kill a hostile while any skill is deployed. This is very useful when using the turret, but not necessarily for the seeker mine. Wildfire triggers a 30% chance to apply the burning effect to all targets within 10 meters when applying it to any target. There is literally no reason you shouldn't pick this. Next up is Death by Proxy, which increases your skill power by 20% for 30 seconds when you destroy a hostile's deployed skill. It increases the power of your turret and seeker mine, so it's definitely a must. And finally, Chain Reaction applies 20% more damage from the blast when you damage multiple hostiles with an explosion. Of course this is useful with the seeker mine, but also with grenades, so use it to your advantage. There are a few things strategy wise you can do with this build to increase your chances of survival. It's a defensive build, so you want to deal a lot of damage, but you are kind of squishy dude. Also your playstyle revolves around your turret and seeker mine, making your area of operations limited. Secondly, you want to deploy your turret in a safe space. In PvE, heavies can kick your turret and it will be down in one hit. In PvP, they can shoot it almost anywhere you place it, but you want to try to keep it out of their line of sight. Thirdly, this build revolves around status effects, especially fire. Make sure to apply the status effects 
to your enemies with a dip different type of grenades and incendiary bullets. These proc the Urban MDR's distracted talent and increase your weapon damage considerably. Try to first use the incendiary bullets and grenades as this will proc the firecrest talent as well. And finally remember that choke points are your friend. Since this means that your turret only has to face one way, this is a solid build, but the squishiness makes it hard to run solo. But as we stated in the beginning of the series, it's part of a fire team. And with that, we want to end the guide. We want to thank you for watching. Ratings, good or bad, help us out a lot. Please give us some feedback on what we did well, what we can do better and stuff like that. All the information you want is in the description, including the pictures of this build, if you want to come back and check it out. You don't have to watch the entire video again. You can just download the pictures in the description. Any questions that you have can be asked in the comment section down below. The same goes for any feedback you have, as long as it's constructive. Thanks for watching and go kick some ass, I guess. Have an awesome day.